Fresh filament fabricates failures, circles created, canted, and resolution remediation. All this and more Print Fix Friday, episode 171. Let's get into it. Starting off with new filament equals bad prints help please so they picked up a brand new roll of polymaker pla plus filament and they can't get a single correct benchy printer prints the anchor make pla plus like a dream and been able to print 16 hour long prints but as soon as i switch to a new brand boom problem after problem after problem printing with the same settings for each it is 12 walls 100 gyroid infill tree supports z hop enabled Avoid print part slash support enabled retraction five, I believe 205 on the nozzle 70 on the bed bed is leveled printed on a Neptune 3 Pro. So the first thing to start with here is that not all filament is created equal. So settings that would originally work for one are not going to work for the other two. It's Benchy two walls. 10% infill, pretty much any kind. If it's gyroid, you can go down to 5% and no supports because otherwise the benchy has no value. And when you're doing a new filament, please make sure to just run a temp tower, especially if it's one that you've never used before. Polymaker and Anchor Make are made at different facilities. Polymaker is actually one of the largest OEM producers of filament out there, period. But as far as I'm aware, they do not make the Anchor Make filament. This is proof that all PLA Plus is not created equal. Hilariously, our understanding is that PLA Plus is often modified PLA, which makes it not actually PLA and instead a something. And unfortunately, companies like Polymaker have outright refused to even talk about what's in the filament, let alone the percentages. So can't really help there. But this is a great example of just because it says it's the same doesn't mean it actually is. These are some chonky freaking benchies, but I did want to point something out. I read through the comments before we start these videos. And they said that they're also watching our videos and it's definitely a help. So, um, thanks. Hi, appreciate it. If you do want to submit your fails for Print Fix Friday, you can tag us on the social media as I guess you can at me on Reddit. The thing that worries me here is that these are for car parts. Don't do car parts out of PLA Plus, please. I understand that parts that may look cool can be 3D printed quite readily, but if you're daily driving this car and it's not just for off-road or track use only and your 3d printed part fails and causes damage to your car or other cars on the road as far as i'm aware you are liable that's not legal advice but don't put yourself in a situation where that kind of thing happens as for the actual part here just run a temp tower a temp tower is going to be the best thing that you can do we can see that the benchy itself does not look great even with all of those perimeters, all of that infill, all of that time for it to cool down, it's not working well. And we have some clues here, right here. I don't know if you guys see it, but it goes from being relatively shiny to relatively matte. That means the filament is not getting enough heat, traditionally speaking. If you underheat filament or you overheat filament, it can often look exactly the same. Underheating filament means it's not really getting all that molten and liquid before it's being extruded, and it can actually cause your extruder to start to skip. We can see that when the printer is speeding up, when it's doing layers that are smaller, the uh, vertical uprights on the benchy are very small, not a lot of time in there. When it does the larger areas, the filament goes matte versus the Anchor Make PLA Plus, which is from what we can see, a relatively consistent sheen. I believe we're printing too cold, and maybe an additional 5 or 10 degrees Celsius would make this print quite a bit better. Again, a temp tower will solve all of this. We actually covered the temp tower in a previous Print Fix Friday, which we'll card to so you can take a look. I hope it helps. Thanks for being a fan. If you all have issues with your prints and you want to get help, let us know. And with a lot of people going to be joining the 3D printing community coming up here, in the next couple of weeks or maybe have already joined in we're here to help 
Uh, I've been doing 3D printing as a hobby for almost 17 years now. That's not great on the math side. <laughs> Why can't my printer do circles? Why does my printer in Ender 3 struggle to print circles? As you can see in the first and third photos, it prints consistently misshapen circles. All the circles seem to happen. I'm very confused. Thanks for the help. Let's take a look. It's in a book. A reading rainbow. So we can see here that we've got circles that aren't circular and it is wow that's actually really bad it's a belt tension issue 99 times out of 100 it's belt tension issue on an ender 3 make sure your belts have even tension but at the same time are also properly tensioned i i know that can be tough there are apps out there that can help you tune it to a guitar string app if it twangs just a little bit, then you should be okay. I don't need it to sound like you're playing through the fire and the flames or something like that, but if your belts are the same tension, this shouldn't happen. This is basically backlash that's occurring as the machine is moving that the belts are stretching a little bit because they're not properly tensioned. The other thing to check is to make sure that the actual pulley on the motor, right, the toothed gear on the motor is properly tightened down onto the motor. Sometimes those grub screws can come loose and those toothed gears can actually wiggle a little bit causing the backlash that we see here. We can see that it actually occurs on more than just the circles where we have infill not connecting to the actual perimeters here, but on the other side, it connects reasonably well. We are also dealing with some intermittent under extrusion, and I think we might be printing a little bit too cold. But yeah, belt tension. It's a great one. We actually covered belt tension in a previous video. It's an old one, but it's still a good one, and we're likely going to be redoing some of those old school help you out videos here in the new year. So if you have any particular things you'd like to see covered in a specific video, please let me know in those comments because who knows, you might see it turned into a video. Next up, two different fails of kind of the same area, I guess. We have which direction? I have an Ender 3 Pro glass bed dual Z for a while and decided to try a Benchy. The only tweaks I've done for settings in Kira are temp related and I've tried calibrating E steps to try and alleviate extruder skipping. I still get extruder skips on the bottom layers if I try to increase speed, and the top layers have a lot of visible lines. Is this the best to expect of my printer, or can I do better? That's a really freaking clean Benji. Yes, you're seeing visible lines. Why? Because you're using a freaking dual color silk. Of course you're going to see these lines, because what you're seeing is, well, I think it's a black and a red, but you're seeing black, red, black, red, black, red. It, it is a complete optical illusion. If your issue is these actual visible lines, the, the crossed hatch lines where we have it going in one direction here, another direction here, maybe that one's Harry Styles. I, I don't know. If that is the issue, you can look at ironing your top layers, but that's not going to really solve the issue particularly for silks that don't do well when you iron them. Otherwise, honestly, this Benchy looks great for an Ender 3 with minimal mods and only temp changes, so A+. Plus. But I have a feeling that they might be on the same path that this next fail is on. How can I get this smoother? But watching a ton of videos as well as testing prints and wasting filament. That's the bummer with testing, but I can't seem to get this print smoother. I've tried ironing, but the software or file doesn't recognize the hood and trunk as a top. I believe it's possible I printed a garden gnome that's basically ready to paint similar settings. I'm using a Flash Forge Adventurer 5M, really one of my favorite budget 3D printers for the money, and I really want to check out the brand new AD5X, so Flashforge, if you're watching, send me one. I really want to take a look at it. They're using Orca Slicer, PLA. I did notice that the nozzle's only making it halfway to the middle of the hood and trunk before going back. I know some post-production is necessary, but in the videos I've seen this can be better. I just don't know how. Yes, I'm very new to this hobby. I'm going to take a look at this one because I, I think this is the big deal. You are actually ironing. It looks, I mean, these top layers look beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. 
First off, what you're dealing with is a resolution issue. Your layers are too thick. If we take it from, let's say, maybe four or five C's down to two C's or one C for your thickness, then you can truly get down with the thickness. Oh, ah! But it does appear that your ironing settings are correct because these top layers are smooth as butter. The best thing that you can do is lower your layer height. That's what I would recommend, especially as a newbie. Yes, it's gonna mean it takes so much longer to get the print done. This looks like it could be like 0.25 or even 0.3 millimeter layers. Going to 0.1 or even 0.08 or 0.05 if you're, you know, willing to let it go that long would vastly increase the resolution of the part. And I think that might be the same thing that the Benchy user here is dealing with as well. They're seeing more lines than they want, potentially the layer lines themselves. If you're trying to get a print that looks better and it is just a filament printer, you just have to lower your layer height You'll print more layers, and those more layers mean the stair stepping becomes a lot smoother, I guess, and will certainly be a lot easier to post-process. Sanding something like this to make it look right would be an absolute bear, but in all actuality, just lower the layer height, everything will be good to go. Speaking of good to go, I want to thank all the awesome people listed right next to me at the $5 tier to hire that make videos like this possible and travel like I am currently doing possible. We are still traveling right now from Smurf, making some awesome content for you in a couple of areas across Europe. And that's all that I'm going to be telling you. And in fact, this is the D20 that we used to raise a bunch of money for the Sanjay Mortimer Foundation. Thank you to those awesome, wonderful, generous donations from viewers like you. If you do want to support the efforts that we do, you can do so by joining for as little as $1 a month and at the $10 tier and higher you get access to our private Discord server. If you have made it this far in this video, you will enjoy the rest of the Print Fix Friday series, which we have over 170 other videos for you to go check out in just fixing print failures. But that is all we have for you all today. Hey, go check out the Prusa tour. We'll That'll be next to it. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loves. Don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one.